Hello guys, in this video we will be taking a look at the autosomal DNA of two Sarazm in Neolithic culture women from Tajikistan. Uh, now these are basically the indigenous Central Asians before the Indo-Europeans came there from Europe. So let's get into, into the results of the first woman. This is her predicted phenotype with Nashakot. As you can see, Nashakot is predicting her to have brown eyes, snub-shaped nose, and brown hair. Uh, I wouldn't pay too much attention to what YSEC is giving for her, because YSEC is just overall inferior to my tool. And um, with Snipper Free, she is predicted to have white skin, actually, which is a surprise. Green or hazel eyes and blonde hair, which is once again a big surprise. Uh, she had BEH1, blue eye haplotype 1. Uh, partially BH2, no BA, BH3, no BH4, so probably had dark eyes, uh, probably brown or some kind of a hazel, dark hazel eye color, definitely not blue, right? Uh, she did not have any of the ginger related variants, and she actually had a rare blonde hair related variant, but I never did much research into it, I don't know how important it is. She's got this genotype that protects her from going bald, a really cool genotype, her male relatives would probably be very lucky. Uh, and she's got this genotype for worse executive function, right? Uh, now, it's also correlated to a lower cortical volume in the brain. Very interesting. And she's got the European no-go learner mutation in DRD2. Very surprising stuff, right? Because it's a very stereotypically European mutation. You can see what it's implicated is written on the screen, but I'm just going to tell you it's a very stereotypically European mutation. And by the way, I'm pretty sure the other sample here has this genotype too. Now, from this genotype in OXTR, we can determine that she indeed had the sociopath gene, and uh, she did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia, which means uh, she might have needed glasses to see in a distance. Now, moving on to polygenic traits, she has a high-risk score for uh, Crohn's disease, a below-average risk score for Parkinson's disease, a below-average risk score for type 2 diabetes, a average risk score for bipolar disorder, uh, a very high risk score for asthma, um, a below average risk score for type 1 diabetes, and a low risk score for schizophrenia. Now this is what she scores with Eurogene's K13. Here you gotta keep in mind that she does score a lot of South Asian, but not all of this South Asian is AASI. South Asian here is AASI plus Iranian Neolithic farmers, so it's not exactly 23% ASI. although she does have, uh, she does have an um, South Indian, ancestral South Indian component to her genetics as well, uh, very evident by her oracles here. Uh, this is what she scores with Pan DNA LK12. Once again, we see that relative to the Caucasus hunter gatherers, she's got some really decent shift towards South Asia. She's got some South Asian ancestry. Uh, she's still closest to Korea Skide out of the ancient populations, still closest to Caucasus hunter gatherers. Um, however, she is closest to Brahmi and Makrani and Baloch people out of modern people today, and these folks, these Brahmi, Baloch Makranis, they have a decent amount of ASI admixture. And this is what she's scoring with Ancient Eurasia K6. Now this result kind of does settle the whole debate about whether or not these Sarazm in Neolithic individuals have ASI admixture. Uh, she's got 10% Ancestral South Eurasian, which by the way doesn't even peak in South India. Uh, this component actually peaks in Australia, right? It's an Australoid component. She is still closest to CHG out of all the modern, out of all the ethnicities, right? She's cl still closest to Caucasus Hunter Gatherers. Uh, however, she's getting modeled as a mixture of Caucasus Hunter Gatherer plus Ancient North Eurasian or Caucasus Hunter Gatherer plus Gujarati. So she's both more Ancient North Eurasian and more Indian than the Caucasus Hunter Gatherers. Now let's move on to the other sample, also a woman, but this one got a different haplogroup. She got J1 haplogroup. So this is what she looked like. She's predicted to have dark brown eyes. Uh, Snub-shaped nose, similar to the previous in individual. By the way, you might assume that these indigenous Central Asians would have had like big, long, narrow noses, but no, not really. Uh, they're predicted to have snub-shaped noses and black hair, right? She also had the same rare blood, blonde variant in TPCN2, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and she had BEH1, blue eye haplotype 1, which is typical for Eurasians, but no BEH4, no BEH2, no BEH3, so yeah, definitely had very dark eye color. Now, uh, in DRD2's pro in pro variation, she's got the stereotypically European no-go learner genotype. Now, I don't know how typical that was for Central Asians back in the Neolithic, but for modern inhabitants of Tajikistan, this would be a very exotic, very, very exotic genotype, right? Um, she's got heterozygous genotype for comts valmet variant, so intermediate levels of dopamine in the brain. And uh, 
probably does not have the sociopath gene, you know, although it, it does say lack of empathy for one of these. The other one says higher levels of empathy. So I'm just going to say not a sociopath, not a sociopath, right? Uh, with EDAR, she does not have East Asian EDAR, no East Asian facial traits. And um, she did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which means was most likely lactose intolerant as an adult. Although this does, um, this mostly applies to Europeans. Like if you're a European and you don't have this mutation, you're probably lactose intolerant, although there's exceptions. But if you're not a European, it doesn't really apply to you. You have other, uh, you have other variations that make you uh, able to tolerate lactose. And she also does not have the European mutation that protects against myopia, which means uh, increased risk of myopia. And uh, now moving on to polygenic traits, very high risk score for bipolar disorder, very high risk score for Parkinson's disease, um, high risk score for type 2 diabetes, um, high risk score for schizophrenia, uh, also high risk score for brain aneurysm, uh, also pretty average or low risk score for type 1 diabetes, uh, low risk score for coronary heart disease, and high risk score for asthma. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13 from GED match. Um, pretty much the same as the previous sample, maybe more South Asian because the previous sample had 23% South Asian. This one's got 27 and because of that, um, you can't actually model her as a mixture of anything plus anything. Just pretty much pure Brahui is what's closest to her and still very high distance for pure Brahui. Uh, with Pun DNA LK12, uh, we can see she's actually scoring some European Hunter Gatherer. I don't know what's the explanation behind European Hunter Gatherer that they score. Uh, because the previous sample also does score some European Hunter Gatherer here too. Uh, she is closest to Brahui. Once again, these are the closest people to uh, these Sarazm in Neolithic Tajikistanis. And yeah, kind of a mixture of Brahui plus, plus other Caucasus related stuff. And this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Here we can see that she's got actually more Ancestral South Eurasian than the previous sample, which is consistent with the other GD match calculator results. She is also closest to CHG. CHG is the population that is the closest to her. Uh, but she's actually getting modeled as a mixture of CHG plus Gujarati line number. Uh, 18, 19, 20, you can see she's getting more as a mixture of CHG plus various Indian groups. So she's got more Indian admixture than what's typical for CHG. Now, thank you guys for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And also you can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description.